welcome to this episode of Behind the Wrestler. My guest at this time is none other than Miss Rivers. Um, thank you very much for taking the time out and giving us a little insight and giving us your story. All right, thank you. But really what it should be called is Behind the Manager. How about that? I mean, I'm not really a wrestler, isn't it? Because uh, all yeah, I'm that's... doing is just being with the side all the uh, professional wrestlers that I work for and even just watch the opponents and just feel like they're crap. But anyway, that's <laughs> um, pretty much how that should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, the first, the first question usually I ask is, you know, who inspired you to become a professional wrestler? But instead of that, I'm going to ask who inspired you to um, be involved in professional wrestling and how'd you go about it? Um, who inspired me to go as to being a professional wrestler? That's a tough question, but that's a really good question, though. Um, what really got me into professional wrestling was uh, John Cena, and it's just the way that he, he's got into um, his, you know, his uh, fans and how he prospects his way into uh, professional wrestling. Um, and it doesn't mean that he doesn't have to be in such wrestle skill and all it is is just the matter of his talk and the way he says things he catchphrases it all um it really is like a true believer and um having to be like a incident of uh, no no uh, really like a um i would say like more of a uh, sensitive girl uh growing up and growing up as an autistic girl um I needed to build kind of the confidence as I needed to. And the the wrestler itself had really put me to give up and um, strive a little bit more. And I think I grew up um, to be the, the most confident woman that I've been ever since. So now I'm like kind of helping people. Now I act like him. And I'm really thankful that he actually also... Um, followed me on Twitter last year. So I'm really, um, really happy and thrilled that I get an all time hero to have followed me. And so I can follow more on those footsteps. So yeah, that's pretty much John Cena for you. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I was just, you know, following everybody randomly. And yeah, people were... totally. Hey, with me. Um, and, you know, uh, moving into like, trying to find um, a professional wrestling school and to, you know, move into like, you know, managing wrestlers and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. How do you go about trying to find a, a wrestling um, academy here in New Zealand? And uh, what was your first day of training and your thoughts and what you take away from it? Um, well, I really wanted to be a professional wrestler in the beginning and um, what I found was in Pet Pro Wrestling, um, I found it in my very first Armageddon Expo when I was about 15. Um, I then came into a, a, a wrestling show that they were putting on through Armageddon and I heard this big massive bang and I remember like um, going in, wanted to go have a look and didn't know what that sound was and then all of a sudden, yeah, there was a lot of crew uh, members and a lot of the wrestlers out of IPW slash Impact Pro Wrestling and um, I watched it and I was really glued and they were acting the same way as how WWE. The first person I got to meet was uh, Bruce A and I then went into the, um, the counter and met Brennan A and the fact that um, I, I was so intrigued by the professional wrestlers and I wanted to ask the first question was how old do you have to be to be a professional wrestler and when I was 15 she told me to be 16 and I was like okay so maybe I can wait a, uh, maybe one more uh, year so I kept that in mind and when I was turning 16 that was the, the key to like okay I'll um, type in now, get the emails and blah, 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 because I haven't even watched their shows more after that um, uh, show days. So um, I came in and um, I, I got told to come back to Armageddon the next year. So um, they then came into um, 
yeah, so they asked me like a couple of questions and then um, they then um, let me trial with them for about five minutes. And yeah, and that was worth my time. And then by the time I was finishing uh, years 11, then that's when I started coming into professional wrestling. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all 10 years ago, which I was quite surprised just how fast it's all coming through. Yeah, time flies, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, like, doing it for, for so long, and you've obviously seen the, the evolution of, you know, when you started to where it is now. Um, what is your opinion from, you know, when you first came in to how it's evolved and how bigger it's getting now? Um, I'm sorry, can you, like, ask the question again? Because I think I got a bit cut out before. Sorry. Okay. Um, so, like, you know, when you first came in, to where mm -hmm. it is now, in the evolution to to this point, um, yeah. you know, where where do you think um, the differences between from where you started to where it is now, and how how much a little bit more bigger it is? Um, well, yeah, but it kind of did grow, and um, it, I think like in paper wrestling was at the time like trying to have it start and get us into the ring, and you know, um, ever dream about professional wrestling. And um, I think it's, um, they don't need to have anything else like um, like TV or social media, although that's kind of have helped them a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think it's having to be in different places each time, like um, being outside of uh, Auckland and being outside of the um, New Zealand, maybe almost. And I think it's just to be in different places each time without having to be in the same places all the time. So that's always what I thought is like, you want new, want new places and bigger places and different people. So I think it's, that's probably what progressed. And especially like Dakota Kai and especially Travis Banks, those are the two WWE people that, um, who have made it look like we have gone into the scene where we should make New Zealand wrestling happen. So I'm really um, surprised just how big it is, you know, over the past uh, over 15 years. So quite surprising just how uh, cool that is and having to be part with them and watch them grow each time when even if I am in the ring or not, it's, it's there for them. Um, and like, you know, when you were, you know, managing your first, you know, couple of wrestlers and stuff and coming out the curtain for the very first time, what was that experience like and what did you take away from it? Um, sometimes I, um, I knew I wanted to know to do managing, but I think nobody ever told me and I uh, think that um, I was learning each time, but I wasn't really sure if I was going to be back as a professional wrestler. But the good thing was is that like um, having to learn by the one person who um, was willing to take that opportunity, um, it made me look like a better person in the ring and um, I progressed by then. Um, so, um, before I was with Kurt, um, all together I was in the investment and it was having to learn each steps each time. Uh, but I had to be like, you know, validating a manager or slash the uh, investment owner. So that really uh, helped me a bit more to like understand and like spring out the wings as I needed to. Um, and then um, coming with Kurt, um, they knew that he was up to something. And so um, I randomly got joined in and um, I think one other person wanted to work with me too. So that kind of had helped and progressed more. And I've got to thank those um, fewer people who would let me have that opportunity. And so I was very, very fortunate that Kurt had the opportunity to grasp the IPW New Zealand heavyweight title. And that um, that hand was going to be probably the most difficult thing that would happen, but it happens to be the biggest opportunity and having to explore more, getting to learn a little bit more. And um, I think it's always having to be a him on his side. Um, because whereas like um, in the beginning, it was like nothing was happening. 
and then um, having to learn from the champion and then having to just kind of tone down, but then trying to grasp into um, more um, indications and other directions um, by then hand. So I was really lucky to get that opportunity now to like learn more with these uh, people that I work for now. And it's, uh, and it's, it's amazing just tell um, they've progressed as well. And, you know, like coming out of the ring and stuff and like being, being a manager and accompanying wrestlers and stuff, like you got to learn, you know, how to read the crowd and react to the crowd, you know, like mm -hmm. of what they're saying and stuff, but not like, because, you know, crowds can go up and down sometimes and you have to try and pay attention. What are, what are some of the um, challenges that you um, have had to face and had to, like, you know, um, be like, okay, maybe the timing was a bit off or should I do this or should I do that? What are some of the challenges as a manager that um, you face? I think it's having to face if I'm doing it right or doing it wrong. But um, I think I can remember one story and the last time I was with SPW and I was doing Queenstown and um, me and Kurt, we were out there and um, we had to come out as base and the other person was heel. And um, I think something didn't go so right because of um, how people kind of reacted. But that was because there were so many uh, people that were drinking at the time and I couldn't really understand them. I was trying to get up their feet. And it felt like being John Cena when you're the face, but you get really booed at. And uh, it was uh, really, it was really terrifying. And I remember like we came out with a win, but then um, I remember went from this to this and it was really terrible. Um, but I think I remember one point um, after the show and um, there was about a couple of people who helped and one of them including was Slade Musa and um, he actually helped me through get through that point and um, it was quite easy to understand like what he was saying and um, I kind of took that advice. And I think it was also Charlie Roberts who says like, okay, well, you just leave that in the ring and you just leave that um, personal stuff and just walk away. So mm -hmm. that was okay. But um, I think like if I was not doing okay, then um, we could really talk about it. And I know that there's some people out there who um, have gone out there, they haven't done anything good and um, maybe they've um, had one person come up to them and they really splatter everything and get into arguments and all that. And some just feel really bad about it and it won't feel good. And that's why, like, I always say to these people who um, I'm surrounded by in backstage, is like, if you have something like this, just move on, carry on. And next time you come back, you'll do better. And so I always just tell them just to, like adapt and overcome so you know that like, you can have a bad night for that one night and then the next night it might be better so it's always just trying to keep positive and just just think of those things and you know just even flush out those that really don't need it the most so yeah and I think that having to keep the memory with them or not it just it's better off to just like kind of refrain that anyway um and all like the when you first started and stuff to where you are now um what kind of goals did you set in place to achieve and have you achieved them and do you have any new goals that you would like to achieve uh okay can you um referring that again sorry so like when you started did you have some mm -hmm. goals that you wanted to tick off and have you achieved them and do you have any other goals that you would like to achieve? Uh, well, I think um, I think after like having to be a manager and then having to step that through, I just wanted to keep learning. But um, if there's probably like a couple of things I want to do um, now, I really want to get back to IPW. Um, I would love to go to SPW again. Um, I love to maybe start um, doing overseas, including Australia. Um, 
but I think um, let's just see how where career takes me. Um, I think this is quite a first when like a, a manager is kind of um, you know trying to seek out more opportunities, um, which is never a chance. And I want like more um, opportunities to get um, get in more involved with like more. Um, wrestling shows and um, where they can be all placed with another professional wrestler. So that's something I always um, thought about, always dreamed about. Um, I mean, like my bigger goal would love to be in WWE and AEW and I think just a few ton more. So it's quite exciting to see that um, there's, there's more I can um, go about but in the meantime, I just um, want to start slow and try and get back to what um, I need to do now. So, yeah, they're quite interesting enough. Who, who have you, um, you know, given you the most advice and helped you progress as a manager? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so um, it may be not be somebody that I have... Um, worked with but if it was somebody I have um, had an opportunity with it would have to be Dal Knox um, who is the deal and three-time New Zealand heavyweight champion and we are definitely current friends and you know definitely close friends and it's really just cool that like you get to have one-on-one -on -one time and I used to be in the gym with him and he used to tell me a lot of things and used to tell me um, what really wrestling is and getting that type of vibe that I need the most and um, getting that chance to get every advice as I can, it really um, shines every way as I go. So um, I have to be really thankful for him for everything that he's uh, done. And um, I'll be looking forward to seeing him again when I can um, or just whenever he comes back to Impact Pro Wrestling. But... Um, I just think it's quite cool to see that um, there is there is definite more opportunities now um, after what Dales has um, mentioned and um, how things work and now I can give like, advice to people like that. So um, yeah, I think down ops all the way. Um, who would you like to work with besides down ops? Um that you haven't had the opportunity to work with? Like, do you have any, um, you know, like a list of people that you would like to manage or do you just have like a specific list of things that you would like to achieve? Um, I think um, what I've been doing over the past, and I'll, I'll definitely show you, is um, I've been writing on this type of book and um this is what's given to me after my mum had the accident. So, oh, and so hopefully if I can pull it out, um, there has been this little cute little uh, booklet and uh, there is a ton of list of people that I can um, go through and it's, um, it's amazing. Um, that I've written through it like um, just before the new year and it's quite um, simple and easy but um, I think there's just tons and I think I could go so many but um, but yeah like uh, I just want to work with people and um, I just want to work into like the companies I really want to work with so um, hopefully the word is out there and all I can say is it's um, Yep. Um, call me. <laughs> um, what's next for Miss Rivers? What is next for Miss Rivers? Well, I think it's uh, maintaining the New Zealand Professional Wrestling Tag Team Championships. That is with Fashion to Passion because those guys are definite amazing people. Um, I want to um, try and get back to uh, Impact Pro Wrestling, which I probably said not too long ago. Um, and then um, I'll always just help more people, like um, 
people who are a bit struggling in a way of um, professional wrestling and maybe their um, lives ahead. But um, but other than that, I'll be looking forward to coming back after the lockdown slash um, level three and just to achieve more, I guess. Um, is there anything that you would like to say to the people who's going to watch this episode? Well, um, tune in. You never know what I'm going to be doing. You never know what I'm going to say. And more importantly, stay positive, stay safe. And Miss Rivers is the boss bitch right here. <laughs> um, thank you very much for taking the time out and telling us your story. And I hope you're staying safe in the lockdown. And, you know, when wrestling progresses again and, you know, hopefully we'll see you in the ring again. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Thank you.